Everything good? Okay. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> We're recording now. So hi, everybody. I'm Linda Black Elk. I'm the Food Sovereignty Coordinator at United Tribes Technical College up here in Bismarck, North Dakota. And I'm an ethnobotanist and a food sovereignty activist. And I love talking all things food sovereignty. And it was crazy. Um, I do about two of these workshops a month on the first and third Wednesday of every month. So if you guys are interested in attending future ones, you know when they'll be, always at 4 p.m. Central Time. And, um, you know, I, uh, we were talking about like what I should do today. And my husband was like, well, that's a couple days after Valentine's Day. And of course me being the eternal romantic pest, like romantic person, I was like, oh, I should do it like on love and uh, you know, a workshop on love and things like that. And he was like, how about on heartbreak? Cause it's after Valentine's Day. So he went out because I thought um, it would be really good to talk about heart health overall. But also, um, I think it's so important for us to remember that things that affect us emotionally, um, like heartbreak, heartache, like the loss of someone that we love, like the loss of relatives, which of course has been happening so much lately because of COVID, um, you know, the loss of a relationship, these things really affect us. They affect us mentally, emotionally, physically. Um, you know, it's not just, uh, loss isn't just an emotional issue that can very much affect us physically. Um, it happens often. And so I thought, you know, that's going to be, um, yes, Emily, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I thought that that's going to be a really good idea, um, especially now. And um, yeah, so I'm not just going to be talking about um, that sort of emotional heartbreak, the heartbreak because of loss. Um, I'm also going to be talking about keeping your heart really healthy. And, you know, stress, anxiety, all can have a really crazy impact on our heart health. And heart health is, is so important. And I have, I have a few things that I always turn to. When someone comes to me, if they say, you know what, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. You know what, um, I had a, uh, you know, I, I've been having a little bit of angina. You know what, my heart's beating really fast, tachycardia, right? Um, when someone comes to me and says that, um, I, I will definitely touch on blood pressure in this toxic. Um, when people come to me and say that, I always say, um, you know, I have certain plants that I turn to. Of course, hawthorn is, is probably the first one I turn to usually. But um, I know that all of you probably have herbs that you turn to, plant medicines and other things that you turn to during this time. And so if you want to share some of that information in the chat, or if you would even like me to unmute you so that you can share with the group, um, let me know, uh, put it in the chat. I always try to maintain um, what's going on in the, in the chat, but when I get um, going on demonstrating, sometimes I lose track. So if, if I don't see it for, um, right away, please feel free to put it in there again, okay? Um, all right, so I wanna go ahead and get started talking about some plants and I'm gonna um, share my screen with you all um, because that's, important for you guys to see some of these medicines and and you guys have to realize you know i teach right so i teach at united tribes which is a tribal college tribal university um in bismarck it's you know normally most tribal colleges are um on reservations right i a lot of you know i used to teach down at sitting bull college for many years which is on the standing rock reservation um, but United Tribes is different in that it's an intertribal tribal college. It serves multiple tribes. It's not on a reservation. Uh, it's right up here in the Bismarck Mandan area in North Dakota. So we have students from all over. Um, and I teach there and so I'm on Zoom all the time and I'm doing these PowerPoints and sharing all the time. Um, so obviously one of the first plants we're gonna talk about today is Hawthorne. Um, and Hawthorne is just one of my go-to plants for the heart, not just heart health, heart physical health, right? Hawthorne lowers blood pressure. It is amazing to me how many points I can lower a person's blood pressure just by um, putting them on Hawthorne, you know, a few times a day. And when I say putting them on Hawthorne, I mean having them either drink Hawthorne tea made from the leaves 
the flowers, and the fruit. All of them have medicine. There are some studies that are saying that hawthorn leaves and flower have a little more of those active compounds than the fruit. Um, but, you know, I've also seen studies saying the opposite. So, <laughs> so I like to use all three. But, um, you know, they all have really good medicine. So if you guys aren't familiar with hawthorn, it is um, a sort of shrub. Sometimes it looks more like a tree. Um, it gets, you know, pretty tall, like 15 feet tall it can get. Um, but it has lots and lots of branches. Um, one way that you might recognize it, and I actually don't, I'm surprised I didn't put a picture of the thorns in this slide, but hawthorn has insane thorns. Can you guys see me? The thorns can get like three or four inches long and they are unbelievably sharp. Um, hawthorn thorns can actually pierce rawhide and traditionially they were used as kind of an awl, right? To pierce rawhide and leather. So they're very sharp and very powerful. Uh, you do not want to come in too much contact with them. Uh, luckily, it's not difficult to pick the leaves, the flowers, and the fruit of the hawthorn. Um, the, the thorns just tend not to get in your way too terribly much. Um, when, they're, when uh, you're harvesting from, from these. At least, you know, I've never had that happen to me. Uh, there are many species of hawthorn, um, and uh, of course they're called critagus, if you guys are into the scientific names. I actually have pictures of three species on this page, um, critagus succulenta, critagus chrysocarpa, and critagus deglassii. And, you know, they grow all over the world. Um, uh, Hawthorne ketchup actually originated over in England, of course, um, and, you know, we'll be making that today. But all of the species of Hawthorne have really good medicine. So I wanted to talk about this one today. Hawthorne is really known as the heart herb. It, it heals the heart physically, but it also heals the heart emotionally and, and spiritually. It's an amazing plant for the heart. Um, it's edible. It's medicinal. It's incredibly safe. So uh, if you wanted to like, you know, we're gonna make a Hawthorne Oxymel today. Um, if you wanted to use it every day as a tonic, there would not be any problem with that. It's wonderful for healing the heart. And actually there've been recent studies that have shown that Hawthorne heals heart tissue. And I can't stress that enough because you guys for many years, and I'm gonna, you guys have a good look at this, right? You know what Hawthorne looks like. You can see that, that it has the red berries. Um, you can see that it has some different leaf shapes depending on the species. Um, so you guys can see that. I'm gonna stop share there so you guys can, can see me for a second. Um, so uh, Hawthorne is, is just an unbelievable herb. It's so safe and it's so gentle. But there are all these amazing studies now that show that Hawthorne can actually heal heart tissue. So you guys remember for years, cardiologists were saying that once you have a heart attack, your heart is damaged forever, right? Um, you guys have probably read that or seen that. You know, maybe you had a parent or a grandparent who underwent bypass surgery because of damage to their heart due to a heart attack or a um, uh, uh, a heart attack or angina. Um, and they used to tell us that you cannot repair the heart. Not true. Not true. They found that a real change in diet, exercise, and the use of certain amazing medicinal herbs can actually encourage um, uh, heart tissue regeneration and, and the heart uh, tissues to repair. Um, and so Hawthorne is just a, an amazing, amazing medicine for that. Okay. So it's, it's absolutely one of my first recommendations. So I'm gonna get started in making my Hawthorne Oxymel. Okay, what is an Oxymel? An Oxymel is a combination of, this is all it is. It's like the easiest thing in the world. And, and you know, I know, I'm sorry, because I have a lot of friends who make these things and, and um, you know, it's part of their, their business, but I just have to say they're, the easiest things in the world to make. So I hope you guys will all try this at home, okay? Hawthorne is just, um, an Oxymel is just uh, a combination of herbs, vinegar, and honey. That's it. Herbs, vinegar, and honey. Kind of sounds a lot like fire cider, doesn't it? 
but in this case, you don't add the honey until, I mean, uh, in, in the case of fire cider, you don't add the honey until uh, the end of the process, right? Whereas for an oxymel, you add the honey during the infusion process, okay? So I just have like a little kettle in front of me. We're making a hawthorn oxymel today. This is a little different. If I were using fresh hawthorn leaves instead of dried hawthorn leaves, if I were using fresh hawthorn berries instead of dried hawthorn berries, I would not need to cook this at all. I could just put this into a jar and put my vinegar and my honey on top, shake it up a little bit and let it sit, okay? Let me repeat that. If I were using fresh herbs, all I ha would have to do is put my ingredients into a jar and let it sit. But I'm using dried herbs, and so we need to break down those super dry cell walls <laughs> um, of this plant material. Um, and in order to do that, we are gonna heat it a little, okay? And so if you're working with really dry herbs, you're probably gonna need to heat it up a little too. Um, so the recipe that we're working with today, um, I have all my recipes written down, so I'm gonna pull this up. Um, keeping a, a, like a log or a diary of your recipes is really important, okay? Um, Pam is asking if you can use um, Hawthorne powder in this, and you definitely can. Um, it's gonna make your oxymel gritty later, but you know, oh well, right? <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't mind that it's not a big deal. I wanna type the word oxymel into the chat so that you all know, you know, if you wanna Google oxymel, you can do that, okay? So you can see how it's spelled. So I have my pan here and the recipe we're following is two about two to two and a half cups of herbs okay whatever those herbs would be um, I have tasted yarrow oxymels I have had um, I had one oh rose I've tasted rose oxymels delicious um, I've had uh, someone sent me um, what was that recently oh a chaga oxymel that was pretty good um, so you can use any herbs to make an oxymel okay and, and the nice, the, the reason, why are we making an oxymel in the first place? Because we don't want to use alcohol. I'm making this through a workshop for students and faculty and staff at United Tribes Technical College. Um, and uh, we are an alcohol-free campus. And so um, this is not a tincture, right? This is basically an alternative to a tincture, okay? Um, so I'm going to add about two total cups of herbs. Okay, um, and so I'm gonna add about a cup of the berries, and I'm gonna go ahead and add about a cup of the hawthorn leaves and flower that I have dried, that I collected last year. Um, and why am I combining those? Just because I like the medicine in both, you know? I, I, I really like the hawthorn leaf and flower, but I really love the sweetness of the berries as well, okay? So I'm gonna do about a cup of each, and I'm just going to, um, Let's see here. Okay, I wanted to use. Okay, um, <laughs> so I put about a cup of each on there, and now I'm gonna do um, about two to two and a half cups of vinegar. All right, now, what kind of vinegar do you wanna use? Okay, um, I am going to use some apple cider vinegar. So here I have a cup of apple cider vinegar, but you guys, I have an amazing treat. Um, that I get from my friend Jerry Jandru. He's an Ojibwe. Um, they have a farm known as Dynamite Hill Farms where they make maple vinegar. This is just pure maple sap that they have um, given a little, yes, Pamela, oh my God, <laughs> uh, that they have given, you know, added a little bit of yeast and um, let it go and it uh, turns into maple vinegar and it's the best thing in the world. Actually, some of them, he doesn't add yeast or anything. He just lets them uh, ferment into vinegar and um, oh my gosh, it has this amazing aroma of vinegar and maple uh, syrup. It's fantastic. So I'm gonna um, add also uh, about a cup of maple vinegar. We use a lot of it. Um, Okay, so I have my two cups of vinegar. I have my two cups of plants, my two cups of vinegar, and now it's about one cup of raw honey, okay? And um, uh, this is raw honey that um, 
we just bought at the local store. We do get honey, uh, local raw honey from friends of ours as well. Um, but for the for these purposes, I have this bottle that I want to use up. Um, and you guys can see I measured those super carefully, right? No, I hardly ever measure you guys. <laughs> um, I, I just not, uh, I don't feel like it's all that important to, to measure because if I put in too much honey, will it hurt anything? If I put in, um, you know, less honey, like maybe I don't like my oxymel quite as sweet, so I put in less than a cup of honey. It's totally fine, okay? Um, you, you can't screw this up. Two cups of plants, two cups of vinegar, one cup of honey. I'm gonna put this on the stove on a low heat just to let it infuse, heat it up, break down those cell walls of those plants um, for probably about 25 minutes on really low. You could also put those in um, a crock pot on warm, not low. Even the low setting on a crock pot would be too high, um, but you could put them on low, uh, a warm setting on a crock pot and let them go for a half hour or so, okay? Um, Karen is asking a question, do you have or did you have to go to a plant identification, oh, a go-to plant ID book. Um, I actually will address that in just a second, Karen. Um, the, you know, I, I talk about that a lot, plant ID, because it's really important. <laughs> um, okay, so that's our that's our Hawthorne Oxymo. Um, so flash forward the the magic of television. We made this Hawthorne Oxymo earlier today. Okay. So all this is, is our um, vinegar, um, uh, honey, and hawthorn berries, and hawthorn leaf and flower. That's all this is. Put it into a jar, it's still just very, you know, barely warm. And um, I'm just going to put this on my shelf. You know, you guys can see my medicine shelf back here. I'm gonna put this on my medicine shelf and let it sit for about three weeks and let it infuse. So oxymels take time, right? Kind of like fire cider. Um, but when you're done, you have a gorgeous medicine that's safe for uh, adults, safe for elders, safe for children, completely safe for kids, right? Um, especially like, you know, if, if, if you have a young person who has lost someone, uh, this Hawthorne oxymel actually tastes very good even in tea. Um, Hawthorne is safe uh, during pregnancy. Um, I, uh, I was talking to, I can't remember who it was, but I had a, a friend say, well, you know, what if Hawthorne lowers your blood pressure too much? Um, I've, I've never, ever, in, in all the hundreds of herbalists I've spoken to and all the papers I've read, I've never heard of that happening. Um, but it was a question someone had. But yeah, many people, like, like seriously, um, you know, you can eat a bottle of hall ketchup when you're pregnant, dip some fries in there, some chips or something like that. And you're going to be totally fine. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an edible berry, you know? So it's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I think when I think about safety of plants a lot, uh, and this is important, um, when I think about the safety of plants, I think about the fact that, you know, lettuce is technically medicinal, right? But when you're eating a bowl full of salad, you probably don't think, is this safe, right? And yet, you know, uh, when, or, or for instance, when you eat a loaf of rosemary sourdough, I can eat probably a whole loaf of rosemary sourdough um, if it's homemade. Uh, you don't think about like how antimicrobial that rosemary is in there, right? Rosemary infused sourdough bread, delicious. You probably don't think about the safety of that rosemary, right? Even though it's an amazing medicine and a strong medicine, right? <laughs> it's so good to see you guys. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, you know, keep, keep that in mind. You know, plant medicines, oxymels, these tend to be very safe. Um, the, there are certain plants I avoid during pregnancy, like cedar and juniper, um, and we can talk more about those sometime too. Um, so, uh, Sean is asking, how much do you ingest of the oxymel per day? Just a teaspoon in tea? Absolutely, you can do a teaspoon of the oxymel in um, a cup of tea. If you had a cup of green tea, you could still add the oxymel to it. The green tea um, and the oxymel and the hawthorn would work together wonderfully. Um, or you could just add it to some hot water and drink it as a tea itself. It's gonna have, it's gonna taste a bit like kombucha because of that vinegar. Um, 
aspect, if you wanted to incorporate, you know, sort of like use this Oxymel as a daily tonic to lower blood pressure and strengthen the heart and to, um, uh, to nourish you emotionally, uh, to nourish your heart and heal heartbreak, um, you could absolutely uh, do, you know, six to 10 drops three times a day, okay? There's, there's, you're not gonna overdo it with the Hawthorne Oxymel. Um, there are tons of different herbs you could add to the Oxymel. I wanna make that clear. Um, a lot of people, you know, I, I have friends who do a garlic Oxymel uh, that's very antimicrobial and they'll use it for um, when people get infections, you know? And it has that really garlicky, sweet, vinegary. Um, it's delicious, you can use it in salads too. <laughs> I mean, you could use this Hawthorne uh, Oxymel uh, mix it with some olive oil and use it as a salad dressing. It'd be fantastic. Okay. So there's our Hawthorne Oxymel. Now you know how to make an Oxymel. You can make your own forever and you can experiment with different plants, right? It's, it's about two cups of plants. It's about two cups of vinegar and it's about a cup of honey, um, sitting in a jar, uh, for, you know, three to four weeks. Okay. It's that simple. Um, now I'm going to show you guys how to make our Hawthorne ketchup. Hawthorne ketchup um, is really simple. Um, and, and you guys, if you don't like Hawthorne ketchup, or if you don't like the idea of that, make your own tomato ketchup. It's basically the same recipe. You need, you need tomatoes, a food mill, some vinegar, uh, you know, some sweetener and salt. I mean, it's, it's, uh, making your own homemade ketchup is amazing. I, uh, was in Australia, um, doing some work in Australia, and they um, have this stuff, they don't call it ketchup, they have tomato sauce. Uh, if any of you guys are Aussies, you know what I'm talking about. And um, so down there, basically the ketchup is flavored and seasoned with things like cinnamon and clove, and it's delicious. And I always feel like Hawthorne ketchup um, is more reminiscent of that than it is American ketchup. Um, but this is so delicious to like dip french fries in or chips to use it on a hot dog. You know, I know none of those are very healthy, but I figure if you're going to eat a hot dog, why not have medicinal ketchup on it? If you're going to eat french fries, why not dip them in medicinal ketchup? Just an idea. <laughs> you can also use this as a barbecue sauce base. It's delicious on hot wings. Okay. Sorry, that's not healthy either. <laughs> Okay, a bison roast. You want to make some barbecue bison? <laughs> you can use the Hawthorne ketchup as your base. It will be fantastic. So to make the Hawthorne ketchup, we're going to start, um, can you bring me the saucepan? Um, we're going to start with um, about two and a half cups of Hawthorne berries, dried Hawthorne berries, and um, three cups of water. Yeah, I'll take that. So I already did this because of the magic of television. So um, in, in a pot, you're gonna put um, two and a half cups of hawthorn berries, three cups of water for dried hawthorn berries, and about a cup and a half, half of vinegar, okay? Now, let me, let me uh, say this first. Again, I'm using dried hawthorn berries, okay? Most of the recipes that you'll find out there use fresh hawthorn berries, and so you will need, um, you, you won't need as much water. Okay, so, so if you're using fresh hawthorn berries, let's say you have a gorgeous hawthorn tree in your yard um, and you, uh, you know, you're using fresh berries, you'll still use about two and a half cups of the berries, but you'll only use about one and a half cups of water and one and a half cups of vinegar for fresh berries. Okay, um, if you're using tomatoes, okay, you decide you make your own tomato ketchup, you um, will not need as much water. Okay. So, but in this case, I'm using dried hawthorn berries. So the recipe I followed in this pot, I put two and a half cups of dried hawthorn berries, three cups of water, and about a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar. Okay, everyone got that? Um, uh, I can write them in the chat too. Um, I let them cook down for about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, um, and I really wanted those hawthorn berries to burst and get, you know, get soft because I'm going to run them through a food mill to, to get our ketchup, okay? So all I have in here are hawthorn berries, water, and vinegar. That's all, nothing else, no seasonings yet, okay? And so I am going to, where's my other bowl? Down here, yep. 
Okay, so I'm going to put my food mill um, over a bowl, and I'm just going to pour, let me show you guys this. See, these are my boiled hawthorn berries. They're already kind of thick, see that? Um, so I'm gonna pour some of these into my food mill just to demonstrate for you. Oh yeah, thank you, honey. <laughs> so I have my food mill. I poured some of my hawthorn berries into here and I'm just gonna grind those up. Sometimes it can be tough to... So you're just gonna grind. I'm just gonna demo this for you because through the magic of... Oh yeah, and you can add more as you, as you go. Do you guys have a food mill or a food sieve? Um, so already you can see in there that I have some uh, of the liquid, but on the bottom, let's see if I can kind of tip that up so you guys can see, oh, kind of a little bit. You wanna, every once in a while, go through with a spatula and scrape that pulp off, okay, into your bowl. That's really where a lot of the texture um, for your ketchup is gonna come from. Okay, let me grind some more. All right, so you'll just keep going like this for a while. Um, okay. Yes, cook on very low heat, Karen. Um, I don't know if you mentioned, but what other berries would you recommend if we don't have access to Hawthorne? So for the ketchup, I've heard of people making rosehip ketchup before, but I, um, I've i never personally tried it. The only um, ketchups that I've made have been um, uh, tomato ketchup and, um, oh, like tomatillo ketchup I've made before, different sort of solanaceae, right? That family I've made, um, homemade ketchup from but you know and of course tons of barbecue sauces and stuff I've never tried elderberry that's an interesting idea Emily um, I would love to see that can I can I have my ketchup bowl so I can show these guys okay what should I do with it oh there it is okay so once you run it through the food mill and you scrape and you get your pulp um, and your liquid you're basically done with your ketchup because the hawthorn berries are sweet, um, yes, they do have big seeds. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll address that in a second, um, Stephanie. <laughs> Shauna Elk. Um, <laughs> okay, so once you run your hawthorn berries through the food mill and you scrape the bottom and get that pulp off, you'll be shocked at how like ketchup like it is, okay? All, I like immediately. The hawthorn berries, the water and the vinegar, you're basically done with your ketchup. You just need to season it. Um, and it, it's actually very, it turns out to be a very nice uh, ketchup-y texture. Do you guys see that? Like a kind of barbecue sauce ketchup texture. It's beautiful. And that's just the hawthorn berries, the vinegar and the water. Okay, cook them down, run them through the food mill, get as many of the pits and tough skins out as you can. If you want to use those, those seeds, absolutely, they've been what we call scarified. Plant those seeds. Do not throw those hawthorn seeds out. Plant them outside um, and grow your own hawthorn trees, okay? Hawthorn actually grows pretty easily in a lot of places, and it's a great tree to have around. I know it has thorns, <laughs> but it's fantastic for wildlife, it's fantastic for you, for, for food and medicine, okay? So, you know, don't waste those seeds, plant them outside. Um, okay, so to the um, hawthorn pulp, um, all we do is add some seasonings. Now, I'm sorry, I know this is gonna bug some of you, but I can't tell you how much salt to put in here. That is very personal. <laughs> Some people like salty ketchup, okay? Um, <laughs> my husband. Um, Some people like more of a vinegary ketchup. Me, <laughs> he does not like, he, he really d likes the vinegar to be very mellow. Um, uh, I, you know, so, so it's, it's very much personal preference. Um, just make sure that it has a nice balance of sweet, vinegar and salt, okay? Um, and, and you also have to remember that the flavor of this ketchup is gonna be very much dependent on the kind of vinegar you use, okay? So if you, um, you know, using apple cider vinegar, 
is going to taste very different than if you use maple vinegar um, or white vinegar. A lot of recipes call for white vinegar because it doesn't have that sweet apple flavor that apple cider vinegar has. Um, but we used um, uh, only maple vinegar in this because we wanted to make pretty much an indigenous ketchup, right? So this is hawthorn berries, maple vinegar, um, you know, two and a half cups of hawthorn berries, three cups of water, one and a half cups of, um, oh no, did we use apple cider vinegar or maple vinegar in this? I'm sorry, I said apple cider vinegar earlier, but we used maple vinegar in this because we wanted it to be an indigenous ketchup. Um, so uh, that's all we did, ran it through the food mill, and then we added seasonings. I added some pink Himalayan salt, okay? Um, just, uh, you know, I added like a big pinch of pink Himalayan salt. Um, I'm sorry? Yes. Uh, yeah. um, I added some fresh ground pepper. I know that I'm a freak like that, okay? And I know that like, you know, grinding your own pepper in a mortar and pestle seems like really, really stuck up and kind of bougie, but it tastes so much better like that, okay, than pre-ground pepper, in my opinion. So um, I ground my own peppercorns and I added a really good sized pinch of pepper. I just added more because I like it. Um, and now, what are you gonna use to sweeten this? Okay, um, are you gonna use honey? because you totally can. You can use raw honey, why not, right? Um, tastes great. Because I had the maple notes in there already, I actually decided to use maple syrup, okay? Um, and this was sent by friends of ours as well, um, but you can, you, know, you can get maple syrup all kinds of places, uh, preferably from an indigenous uh, person, an indigenous producer, because support indigenous producers. Um, so instead of honey, we um, used maple syrup to sweeten our ketchup and it's delicious. Uh, you could, if, if you want, go ahead and use some, you know, raw cane sugar. Uh, try not to use refined sugar if you can avoid it. I know it's tough um, and it, you know, food sovereignty is a journey, okay? And so there's no food shaming here. So if you, um, you know, use store-bought um, hawthorn berries, uh, or in white sugar and white vinegar, that's totally fine. At least you're giving it a try. You're cooking at home. That's what matters. Don't let anyone food shame you, okay? But you know, it's a journey. So if you can ease your way away from refined flour and refined sugar, please do that. Um, but yeah, so you can use some raw cane sugar to sweeten it as well. Um, so we added our salt, our pepper, our um, sweetener, um, you know, honey, whatever. And then um, you can add other stuff. I, I actually found a recipe that I wanna try for spicy, sweet Hawthorne ketchup. And so of course the sweet is already there. It's coming from um, the maple syrup that we used. But um, it, that recipe actually calls for cayenne pepper. Um, and so um, you, know, you could add a couple dashes of cayenne in there. If we're making a heart healthy ketchup anyway, why not take it a step further and use some other heart healthy herbs? Um, why not add some five spice powder, right? The cinnamon, the clove, the cardamom in the five spice powder is gonna give it such a beautiful flavor. Um, and five spice powder is fantastic heart medicine. All of those you know, things in there, which I'll talk more about in a second. But, but yeah, you know, uh, season it any way you want. If you want to, you know, add some Tabasco in there or some Sriracha because you love those flavors. I mean, Sriracha ketchup's the thing, right? Um, so you can absolutely do that. But this is, this is our finished product. Um, and, you know, if I wanted to, I could run this. Uh, if, it's, it's incredibly smooth. And um, if I wanted to run this through a food mill, I could. I have a corn chip here. I'm just going to Mm, delicious. So I just wanted to show you guys, my husband, being the man that he is, was over there this whole time um, <laughs> taking care of the rest of those hawthorn berries for us. So right here, all we have, there, I'm going to run that up against there so you can see it. All we have are the hawthorn berries with the water and the ketchup. My husband just ran them through the food mill through for us. So that was nice. <laughs> um, 
Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Sean. I actually did not talk about that. I, I will talk about that. <laughs> um, so Sean was asking, can we back up for just one second to address something, a question in the chat? Sean was asking, after you let your Oxymel sit, okay, so we're going back to the Oxymel. For those of you who might have just logged on, um, earlier we made an Oxymel with hawthorn berry, hawthorn leaf and flower, um, honey, and uh, vinegar. That's it. Heated it up for a little while, put it into a jar, and now we're going to let it sit for three to four weeks. And then we will strain it. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sean. <laughs> um, we'll strain it and we'll put these in like dropper bottles or we'll put them in a, you know, a smaller jar like this with a tight lid and we'll keep it around um, and use it every day. My husband, um, he has never been diagnosed with high blood pressure, but his blood pressure has always been just on the cusp. Um, and, and, you know, I always wonder why that is because we like have an amazing diet in our house. We always try to eat really well. We eat tons of traditional foods. But then early on in our marriage, I started finding the random candy wrapper in the car or the random can of em empty can of Red Bull. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is why his blood pressure is high. So I have to get on him, but, uh, you know, pester him about it. But I also do give him Hawthorne um, tincture or Hawthorne Oxymel every single day, um, every day. Okay, so if you have someone that you're concerned about, you can absolutely, an elder, a, you know, a, young per, a younger person even, um, you can absolutely use this for them every day. Love you, dear. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's our Oxymel. Going back to our ketchup. Um, my husband was kind enough, so all we did, in case you just uh, logged on, is we heated up um, Hawthorne berries um, with uh, vinegar and water. Um, and then we ran them through a food mill, a food sieve. And um, this is sort of the texture. It's almost just like ketchup. Uh, and, you know, it's a great base for a barbecue sauce, um, you know, whatever you want to use it for. But now, yes, we can season this. So um, I actually want this one to, to be spicy. So I'm going to add some cayenne pepper to it here. And you can really overdo it. So just a dash of cayenne. Thank you, dear. Um, a good pinch of, of pink Himalayan salt. You can do overdo the salt in this so easily, and then you're going to be left trying to balance the salt with the sweet. So err on the side of caution. Don't put too much salt in it first. And then if you taste it later and you find that it's um, not salty enough, just add more, right? So it's, it's a process. And you, you can make your own recipe. Everyone has their personal preferences. Okay, I'm here adding some maple syrup to sweeten. How much? And um, uh, shut up. <laughs> I'm eyeballing it. I'm adding my black pepper, my freshly ground black pepper. Um, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and add... Uh, a couple dashes of five spice powder just because I I think that that sounds amazing and um, I've put it in other kinds of ketchup that I made just a little dash little pinch of um, five spice powder okay and I'm just gonna mix that up okay again hawthorn berries vinegar and water through a food mill um, Added black pepper, salt, maple syrup, five spice powder, and cayenne. Okay, and now I am going to taste this with a chip. And uh, no, I better taste it without the chip first. Sorry, jumping the gun. Uh, <laughs> oh. I don't have to change anything. Oh my gosh, it's spicy, delicious. The five spice powder isn't right up front, it's just on the back of the tongue. It's super good. Um, and, and Hawthorne ketchup has a different flavor, right? Because um, Hawthorne berries kind of taste like rose hips. So they have kind of a cranberry apple kind of flavor to them. Sorry, I'm gonna taste this with a chip now. Mm, wonderful. So I have two batches. And I, um, to my uh, amazing coworker, Annette, who's like one of the best uh, chefs I know. 
I'm going to bring some of this to work for you to try tomorrow. <laughs> so um, I'll, you can put these in pretty jars, give them as gifts. Tell someone, you know, um, I know you love French fries and I know you, <laughs> you know, love ketchup. Um, here's a heart healthy ketchup, right? You know, and it uses all traditional uh, ingredients pretty much, right? Isn't that so fun? Isn't that fantastic? Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you guys again. We made two awesome recipes today. Um, you know, fun stuff. Um, but I want to also talk about a few more plants for heart health and, and for healing. Um, Hawthorne, of course, is one of my favorites. But let's not forget about motherwort. Motherwort is a member of the mint family. Now, you guys, check this out. Okay, I, I'm a botanist, so sometimes I take this thing, these things for granted. But check this out. These are two pictures of the same plant, motherwort. Okay, the lower leaves almost look like a sort of maple leaf. And as you go up the plant, you can see those pretty pink flowers, but the, 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 the leaves start to look a little bit more like a goose foot, right? Um, uh, but it is a, a member of the mint family, so it has a square stem, okay? Uh, so you can kind of identify and test that way. It also has a very distinctive odor. Motherwort is one of my go-tos, especially for post-pregnancy blues. Okay, if you know someone, I, I wonder, I often wonder if that's not where uh, the term motherwort came from. I know it's historically been used um, for, um, you know, postpartum depression and things like that. Um, but it's amazing for everyone else too. If you know someone in particular, I have to tell you guys, um, you know, when, when we were at the height of the pandemic and, you know, elders uh, were dying, and Standing Rock lost a lot of fluent speakers, almost you know one right after another at the same time. Um, a lot of my friends uh, really were just hurting so bad, and so um, I was making a tea, and one of the primary ingredients was motherwort. Motherwort does have a very distinctive flavor and odor. You can tell it's a member of the mint family because it has that in the background of, of of the smell and the flavor, but it's very very bitter. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have that beautiful sort of like spearmint peppermint flavor. Um, it's, it's bitter. So I always try to balance motherwort by adding some peppermint or spearmint to the tea um, and some nettles. You know, nettles is such a wonderful anti-inflammatory. So that'll be heart healthy as well. Um, but uh, the, the motherwort is just really wonderful uh, as an anti-anxiety. Um, it helps to calm uh, a very quickly beating heart. It, um, it really helps uh, if you're experiencing, you know, a time when you kind of feel angry at the world. Uh, oh, and by the way, you know, motherwort is safe for teenagers. Speaking of being angry at the world, um, it's safe. It's effective. It's a wonderful, wonderful medicine. You can find it dried. Uh, it's actually considered an invasive plant in some places. I hate using that word, but it's it's you know um, uh, it's considered an invasive. It grows a lot. I, I you know I've found it down in southern South Dakota quite a bit in um, more like wooded areas uh, on the edge of forests. Um, oh, and I have to tell you that when um, when you harvest it. Um, it can get kind of prickly, so be careful. Like either wear gloves, not prickly in a good way, like stinging nettles, prickly in a way where you'll get splinters in your hands. So be careful when you're harvesting it, or if you wanna harvest it really sustainably, um, just take the leaves off, gently pull off the leaves, and then you won't come into contact with the prickly parts. Um, so when, when I say that it's safe for kids, I probably would not give mother wart to a five-year-old, um, but I would give mother wart to a 13-year-old. So, um, and that, you know, it, it depends on from person to person, from kid to kid. Uh, I would definitely like, you know, talk to the child and talk to the parents um, before I gave it to someone. But yeah, it's a, it's a safe, it's a pretty safe herb, like I said. Very safe uh, during nursing as well, okay? Uh, so motherwort, one of my favorites. Garlic, you guys, never, never underestimate the medicinal value of the allium uh, genus that onions, the garlic, the wild onions, the ramps, 
so medicinal, but garlic especially, okay? Um, garlic is a very, you know, has tons and tons of medicinal compounds, um, very, very strong. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you can make it garlic oxymel, as I was saying earlier, um, but in place of using the hawthorn berry, use the, um, use the garlic, okay? It, it would just be garlic, vinegar, and honey. Um, you could heat it up for about 10 minutes, and put it into a jar, and let it sit for three to four weeks and make a garlic oxymel. I'm, so, I'm kind of excited about that, so I keep mentioning it, because I'm going to make a garlic oxymel next. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, uh, um, something that you can do if you feel like you've been exposed to a virus is even eat some raw garlic, okay? Um, and that, you know, will be very effective. Uh, you can um, incorporate garlic into anything that you're eating uh, so that you're getting that medicine. Cooked or roasted garlic is just as medicinal as raw garlic. Some people will say it's not, but I have not seen any evidence that the medicinal compounds uh, dissipate over time, okay? So um, definitely the garlic helps to lower blood pressure, helps to stabilize, um, oh, and lower bad cholesterol, um, helps to stabilize blood sugar. So if someone's diabetic, you know, diabetes has a terrible impact on the heart. So you can absolutely use um, the garlic um, to help lower the blood pressure and things like that too, okay? Um, bee balm. So this is another one that is uh, really important to me as far as um, emotional heartbreak. In particular, I use this after a relationship has ended. I find that it really helps to break that bond um, that you might feel when you're just getting out of a relationship. And um, you know, I, I'm so thankful to the elders who taught me about this plant because I, I feel like it really helps to center you and helps you to be able to handle those kind of breakups a lot better, um, a lot more effectively, you know, helps to work through them. So not only is bee balm an amazing tea, you can use the whole plant, top of the plant, by the way, never pull bee balm up by the roots, cut it off down by the ground. If you're gonna make a tea, you can use the stems, the leaves and the flowers and even the seeds for that matter. Um, uh, I keep it around all the time. If you are going to use bee balm, um, you, you, can, you can actually take some of the dried plant, wrap it up in a piece of cloth, sew it up into a little cloth square, um, put it into a little tie, and put it in your pocket. And then if you start feeling that anxiety, um, maybe, well, I'll just be straight up. Maybe you're going somewhere and you know you're going to run into your ex or something and you just have, you know, your heart's beating fast and you have anxiety. Make sure to have that bee balm in your pocket and you can pull it out and hold it and even smell it and, um, you know, hold it close to your heart and it will really help you. I find it to be such a strengthening plant. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's, it's just one of the best medicines for that. You know, I, I have to say that a lot of, a lot of tribes use it for, um, you know, for heartbreak, for love. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but, you know, so I, I guess, you know, I, I, the reason I'm telling you that is because especially if you're young, you know, I have my, uh, my friend Bailey on here, she's a young college student. <laughs> And, um, you know, so I would say to her, if a guy tries to give you a bouquet of this, be careful. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a wonderful medicine emotionally and physically. I mean, bee balm is super antimicrobial too. Um, you know, so I, I guess you could say it gets rid of germs in more ways than one. Uh, <laughs> ha, ha. Cooties. Hard, yeah, cooties. <laughs> Um, so you can, uh, you know, you can actually drink this as a tea, uh, for strep and things like that too. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, so it's a fantastic medicine to have around anyway. If you, um, want to plant bee balm in your yard, it will spread. You know, one year we went out into the prairie and we dug up one little bundle with the roots that big. And by the time we moved out, it was a patch this big that was like five years later. Okay. Um, uh, I'll be uh, posting this on um, YouTube 
and uh, then I'll post that link on Facebook, Dee. Um, so I wanted to address a couple of questions real quick. Oh, I'll, I'll address those toward the end. But um, yes, yeah, so, so bee balm, wonderful medicine. Um, okay, and then of course rose. Um, wild rose is my favorite. I find it to be, you know, um, have you guys gotten a bouquet of roses for Valentine's Day and been horribly disappointed because they no longer smell like roses? I mean, I just think like, you know, for me, over half of the pleasure of roses is the smell. And they've been so hybridized that that beautiful rose scent has been bred out of roses. And, you know, I find, so I find the uh, roses that are sold in, at a lot of florists to be horribly disappointing. But if you go out and you collect roses on, on the prairie or wherever you live, wild roses, they still have that gorgeous smell. Um, the smell of roses, like rose essential oil, is mood lifting. So if you're um, experiencing some sadness or depression, um, get some rose oil. Uh, you can, if you don't like to wear essential oils, I wear rose oil almost every day, but if you don't like to wear essential oils, you can actually put the rose oil into like a sifter, a, like a little sniffer thing. Um, almost kind of looks like a little tampon. Sorry, but it does. Or like a little tube of lipstick. You can put some rosy essential oil in there. And then anytime you start to feel sad, anytime you start to feel anxious or insecure, you can actually smell that rose oil and it's so uplifting. So rose essential oil, rose tea, tea made from the rose hips, which are the rose berries on the left hand side, closely related to hawthorn berries, incidentally, um, or the rose petals. You can make a tea from rose petals. Um, rose petal jelly is wonderful as well. Um, so uh, let's see, can, nothing, can we use store-bought roses for medicine? Um, so, so you can, I, I, if you're going to use rose petals, uh, store-bought roses for tea, make sure they're organic. The rose industry, like the Valentine's rose industry, um, uses an unbelievable level of herbicides and pesticides on their roses. So please make sure that you um, uh, uh, use organic roses if you're going to use them for tea, okay? I'm sorry? Yeah, and good water, of course. Um, so, uh, sorry, I was just reading some, some questions there. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. I love, I love, you know, things that have a beautiful rose scent to them. Um, rose hips are super high in vitamin C. They help to, they're anti-inflammatory and they help to prevent infection. So you could actually, um, if, if you uh, were working with someone or if you yourself were experiencing some, you know, a difficult time, emotionally, mentally, and even physically, uh, and you wanted something really heart healthy, you could actually do a tea. Th think about this tea, you guys. Rose hips, hawthorn berries, and motherwort. Beautiful. That would be beautiful. And you could use the, um, the hawthorn leaves and flower. That would be fantastic. That'd be a great tea. Um, if you, you know, if you were experiencing a tough time, uh, roses are just one of those things that always, uh, you know, has tended to make people feel better as a tea, as a tincture. Um, my friend Seven Song makes a rose petal tincture where he packs a jar. Um, this is my water jar, but he packs a water jar full of rose petals. And then I think, I think that he actually uses, um, uh, other like ethanol, you know, alcohol, but you know, I have friends who pour other kinds of alcohol over it, but you wouldn't have to use alcohol at all. Why not make a rose petal oxymel with that beautiful rose flavor? Rose petals, by the way, uh, taste the way that um, roses smell so that, you know, they're delicious, um, but you could make a rose petal oxymel. You just have to use a lot of rose petals for it, probably more than two cups. You'd have to really pack that jar tightly. Okay, um, so roses, uh, and then I wanted to talk about, um, you know, it's, it's about time to go, but I wanted to talk about my strong heart soup, okay? You guys, listen to this. If, um, if you're having a hard time, uh, if, if you um, have high cholesterol, if you um, have high blood pressure, if you are, um, you know, getting over heart surgery, like maybe you've had a bypass or something like that, and you want to strengthen, 
do? You're being noisy. You want to strengthen your heart? Make a strong heart soup, okay? Start off with bone broth. Now, if you make your own bone broth, wonderful, okay? Oh, yes, Annie, thank you. So Annie um, posted some of her recommendations, things that she uses, like violets and lemon balm. Oh, I love lemon balm. Um, I have a friend, uh, Valerie. Um, she's not on here tonight, but Valerie Seagrest, who uses um, lemon balm, elderflower, and lemon, like lemon juice. And she said her kids say it tastes like lemon candy because, you know, the sweetness of the elderflower. She puts those in a tea. So beautiful. Thank you, Annie, for recommending those. Um, okay, so um, for the strong heart soup, and this really will strengthen your heart and help you to even deal with stress better, okay? So not only is this great physically for your heart, it's going to be great for you emotionally and mentally uh, as well. If you want to use boxed bone broth, that's fine. But if you have your own frozen bone broth that you make, like maybe you guys got a buffalo and you want to use some of your buffalo bones and make some beautiful buffalo broth and you freeze that or can it, use that. But if you, you know, go to the store and you buy some, um, you know, a jar of bone broth, use that. Okay. Don't, don't feel weird about that. Bone broth takes a lot of time uh, to make. Okay. So um, you add your bone broth to a kettle. You can add some water if you want, but the more bone broth you use, the richer the soup will be. Um, on a sheet pan, you want to, um, on broil, you want to char some, uh, some medicines, okay? I didn't say foods, I said medicines, because um, uh, ginger, when I say thumbs, I mean, you know, about your thumb size, can be bigger, you know? Uh, ginger, garlic, onion, turmeric, uh, jalapenos, char those in an oven. And, and like it says on, the, on here, don't overchar. Do you see the picture there? Notice how the edges are basically you know, turning brown and black. That's a really nice char. If any of you guys have ever made pho before, P-H-O, the Vietnamese soup, you know that you cannot make good pho broth without charring the veggies first. You have to do this. And I will tell you guys that charring those medicines, the garlic, the ginger, the turmeric, the onion, um, the, the, the chilies, will give your soup the most amazing flavor. Do not skip that step, okay? So put your bone broth in there, you know, maybe some water, put your, um, you know, char your veggies, then add those to the, to the bone broth, then in like a little uh, tea bag or wrapped in a piece of cloth, um, put a couple of star anise. These are all heart medicines. Star anise, antiviral and also a heart medicine, okay? Uh, cinnamon, antiviral, um, great heart medicine, great for diabetics, you know? Strengthens the pancreas, helps with blood sugar. Um, cardamom, same thing. Uh, dried chilies, of course. Lowers blood pressure, lowers bad cholesterol. Coriander, same thing, okay? Coriander is also wonderful for helping to rid your body of heavy metals, okay? So, you know, put those in a, a tea bag or something and then throw, those, throw that into your soup so that can infuse into there. Then you can just take the whole bag out later. Um, add, put everything in the pot, simmer it on low for a couple of hours, um, strain the broth and use that stock. Drink it. You know, drink a cup of it a day. That right there, that's medicine soup, you guys. Drink it every day. Use it as the base for a vegetable soup. Use it as the base for pho. I have a, a picture of a plate of beautiful pho vegetables on there. Those are all heart-healthy herbs. Thai basil, mint, um, uh, cilantro, uh, even the citruses and the chilies, all good for the heart. You guys, medicine soup is where it's at because it's delicious <laughs> and it's heart healthy, okay? I'm sorry? Oh yeah, oh gosh, oh my gosh. My husband just told me, guys, listen, um, we just had a huge freeze down south, right? You guys know this, <laughs> it's national news, international news. Um, if you, I, I don't want to drive prices up too much, but you guys go out and buy your citrus now. 
um, and freeze it because my guess is that the price of citrus is going to go astronomically high in the next few weeks. So if you guys use a lot of citruses, please go out, buy a bag of lemons, buy a bag of limes, buy a bag of oranges, um, and you can freeze them, peel and all. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. You're not going to be able to eat it like a peeled orange, but frozen oranges are actually delicious. Um, save the peel. Use the orange peel in your fire cider, okay? Use the lemon peel. Um, you know, you can make preserved limes and preserved lemons. I've always wanted to do a workshop on that, so maybe we'll do that sometime. But please, you know, the citruses are going to be, and, and my guess is that, you know, a few other things are probably going to get pretty expensive in the next few weeks. So if you're a fan of the citruses like I am, go out and get them now, okay? Um, okay, so I just wanted, we've, we've actually gone over lots of recipes today. We made our Hawthorne Oxymel, um, which is just two cups of herbs, um, uh, 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 two cups of um, vinegar, and a cup of honey um, heated for a while, put into a jar. Um, my husband actually brought, look at that. This is our oxymel that we started, and, and this is another batch. I'm just going to add it to, the, to this jar, <laughs> probably. Um, and I'm going to let that sit for three to four weeks, and then I'm going to strain it, Sean, <laughs> and then put it into clean jars. Um, we made our beautiful hall ketchup, which is about two and a half cups of hawthorn berries, um, three cups of water, and a cup and a half of vinegar, um, cooked for about 25 minutes, fed through a food mill, um, and then uh, uh, we use that pulp um, and then we uh, add spices to it. Um, we talked about our medicine soup, which I highly recommend for heart health overall, lowering blood pressure. And I mean, think about how nourishing a bowl of soup is. A bowl of really good soup will um, help your mood, lift your mood as well. Um, and that's a great pho base, by the way, if you like to eat pho like we do. Um, uh, yeah, so um, we talked about the motherwort, we talked about rose hips, we talked about, um, I can't remember, <laughs> but you know, we talked all about like heart herbs, and so um, I hope that you guys, oh yes, the bee balm, absolutely, uh, uh, can't forget about that one. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I addressed some of the questions in case the Hawthorne ketchup in the jars, if you don't seal them, which you can, if you want to seal your Hawthorne ketchup so that it lasts a year, a couple years, absolutely you can do that. This Hawthorne ketchup, because of the um, honey, the, the, the sweetener and the um, vinegar, can actually last in the fridge for a year. It lasts a long time. Um, so the Hawthorne ketchup will last quite a while. The Oxymel will last pretty much forever. If any, if any of you at the last minute here have any recommendations for the heart, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, uh, someone is saying that they used to find pink flowers on walks that they would take when they're younger. Um, it probably is wild rose um, if you'd pick them and eat them, especially if you're anywhere near us in the Dakotas. The pink flowers in the summertime, I can't think of anything else that it would be. So anyway, thank you guys so much for coming. It was great to see you all. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, you know, contact me on Facebook and I'm happy to answer any of your questions there. So, all right. Awesome. Thank you guys very, very much. You guys are so welcome. Oh, Stacy, good to see you, sis. <laughs> see you, Stephanie. Have a good one. <laughs> Thanks for coming again. Thanks, Sandy. Great to see you. <laughs>